Hello, in this video I'm going to be trying to kind of clear up the confusion about digital PMR and land mobile radio formats or well actually I, I should call them standards really they're standards so to start with the basics you'll need to know these things to understand what's going on in the rest of the video you'll need to know that a vocoder is a bit of code designed to take analog audio from the microphone of the radio and turn it into a stream of bits which is then sent over the air um, and some examples of vocoders are the IMBE the AMBE plus, AMBE 2 plus um, in the rest of the video I'll just call them IMBE and AMBE just for short it's a bit difficult to say AMBE Okay, um, a digital radio standard, you'll need to know what that is. And so that is a method of transmitting digital voice that is usually defined in a specification document and followed by all radios that adhere to that standard. So examples of standards are P25, DMR, NXDN, DSTAR, DPMR, P25 Phase 2 and the others. Um, and then there are multiple access schemes these are ways of allowing multiple users to access the radio system at once so you've got FDMA and TDMA um, there's also CDMA but I'm not going to talk about that in this video there's plenty of explanations of that available on the internet um, so FDMA is frequency division multiple access and TDMA is the same but with time instead of frequency. So let's just address some common misconceptions. Different digital standards work with each other. No, they don't. They never work with each other. Digital standards can be compatible if they use the same vocoder. No. Nope. No, they still won't work together. How about if they use the same modulation? No, they still will not work together. Or the same multiple access method? No, they won't. Digital radios will only work together if they follow the same standard. Okay, so let's talk about vocoders. A digital standard may or may not specify a vocoder. Usually they do though. Um, there are some standards that don't specify a vocoder which makes them particularly confusing such as DPMR. Um, in DPMR the higher end products use Ambi Plus 2 and the lower end, the cheap products, use other vocoders like the Chinese made ASELP vocoder which is used by radios like the Kirisun S780 which I did quite a few videos on DVSI is a company that makes vocoders including the ones most commonly used in digital radio commonly used vocoders by them are shown below so I've got like a timeline of vocoders made by them so it starts off with IMBI which is used in P25 and then there's AMBI which is used in Open Sky and D-Star and then they developed AMBI a bit more and called it AMBI Plus and that's used in some other things, I'm not sure what I think that might be used in satellite telephony um, and then there is AMBI Plus 2 which is used in a lot of things P25 Phase 2, DMR, NXDN and usually DPMR and um, there's a bit more on vocoders here. Vocoders can run at different bit rates, so having more bits means it can produce a better representation of voice. This is why P25 can sound better than later standards, even though they have newer vocoders. The reason for this is because P25 uses a full rate vocoder, but most of the later standards use half rate vocoders. Advances in vocoder technology allow the use of lower bit rates while still having acceptable speech quality. This is why later standards use half rate vocoders. You can compare this to um, something like MP3s. If you have a lower bit rate MP3 file, 
then it will sound a lot worse than a high bitrate MP3 file. But then if you compare it to an MP4 audio file, you can get a better sound quality for a lower bitrate. So you can compare vocoders to um, music audio formats. It's basically the same thing really, except vocoders are just for voice only. So why would you want to use a half rate vocoder when you can use a full rate vocoder and get a nicer sound quality? Well, you can send less bits over the air by using a half rate vocoder and therefore you use less bandwidth or less equivalent bandwidth. If we take DMR as an example, DMR uses 12.5 kHz channels. A full, a full rate vocoder would require the whole 12.5 kHz, but with a half rate vocoder, it only requires half of the channel. So they divided the channel in half by time. They've divided it in the time dimension, which allows two users to talk at the same time. Another example is NXDN, which uses the same vocoder, the same half rate vocoder. NXDN doesn't use 12.5 kHz channel, so it uses only 6.25 uh, kHz. So that does divide the channel in half by frequency, whereas DMR divides it in half by time. It uses time slots. So there's more on that on the next slide. We've got TDMA and FDMA, that's what I've just described when DMR divides the signal, or divides the channel actually, by time. That is TDMA, it's using TDMA, time division multiple access. And when NXDN divides the channel by frequency, by fitting two channels in one 12.5 kilohertz bandwidth, that's using FDMA. When you need to send less data than the maximum amount possible on the channel, that's when you would want to use one of these TDMA or FDMA or CDMA um, schemes, these multiple access schemes. So doing this allows greater efficiency. If you used a 12.5 kilohertz channel and just put one 6.25 kilohertz thing in there, then it wouldn't be very efficient because you'll be wasting another 6.25 kilohertz. But fitting two of them in one channel is increasing the efficiency. So that's what FDMA and TDMA are for. In FDMA, one user will speak on one frequency and another will speak on another frequency. But um, it's called FDMA because you're dividing your resource. If you have one 12.5 kilohertz channel, that's your resource, and you'll split that into half, and you'll use the bottom half for one group of people, and the top half of the channel for another group of people. Now in TDMA, it has the same kind of concept, you're splitting the channel, but instead of splitting it by frequency, you split it by time. Um, there are different reasons for doing each of these schemes. FDMA needs much um, better filters, on the radios, but TDMA you have to have um, a kind of you have to have a design that allows it to turn on and off really quickly. So there are advantages to each of them. So when listening, you'll hear the voice continuously in TDMA because even though it's turning on and off the um, signal, it's only transmitting for half of the time. It's going on and off really fast. But while it's transmitting, it will send enough data enough vocoded speech for the other end to um, kind of fill the air with speech to kind of output that speech during the other time slot when it's not transmitting. So it's if, for example, the time slot is only 30 milliseconds long, it will use that 30 milliseconds to send 60 milliseconds of speech. And then another person can be sending speech on the other time slot and that's how you get um, the equivalent of two channels in one. Okay so I've gone and drawn a few diagrams to help you understand FDMA and TDMA. This one up here is meant to be 
a 12.5 kilohertz analog FM channel. This one over here is FDMA where the 12.5 kilohertz channel is split into two and so that half will be 6.25 kilohertz and then the channel next to it will also be another 6.25 kilohertz and then below that is uh, TDMA which is a bit more complicated to understand um, but so I've, I've got the um, amplitude up here and the frequency along the bottom along the x-axis and along this axis is the time so ignore the time for a second ignore the time axis this is similar to the one above it except instead of having two radios transmitting in the channel you only have one radio and transmitting and it will kind of go up here and cover the whole top like that so it will cover the whole channel and that's what you see here right but in this one you have it going on and off with time so if this is one time slot here it's on in this time for like let's say 30 milliseconds uh, different um, standards will define a different amount of time that they're on or off for so let's just say 30 milliseconds here it's on for and then in the next 30 milliseconds it's not transmitting and then in the next 30 milliseconds it is transmitting so that's just looking at one radio that one radio is transmitting there not transmitting there transmitting there not transmitting there and it gets all of the data that it needs to get across by just transmitting in half the time because it uses the half rate vocoder however the, um, the way that it uses TDMA to achieve greater efficiency is they have another user transmitting in the time when this person is not transmitting so before this person's before this user here is transmitting there'll be someone transmitting there and transmitting there and transmitting there and so on and that's how TDMA works right so I just realized that I actually forgot to look at this diagram down here that I drew um, this is TDMA and on the y-axis is amplitude and on the x-axis is time and so it's basically looking at that diagram there um, but only looking it doesn't use three dimensions in the, it only uses the two it only uses the x and y axis so it's a bit easier to understand so we're not looking at the frequency here because we know that TDMA fills up the whole channel but we're looking at the amplitude whether it's on or off depending on time so this is another way of looking at it that might make it easier to understand so um, this is let's say this is slot 1 and that's slot 2 so here slot 1 is transmitting there's an empty space for slot 2 so slot 2 could transmit at the same time and then um, again slot 1 is transmitting slot 2 is empty slot 1 is transmitting so if you want to use this to achieve its full efficiency you would have two users transmitting at the same time in both of the slots that was just a little extra add-on to um, make sure you've understood TDMA so I've talked about vocoders and channel access mechanisms but I didn't mention modulation um, sometimes schemes can work with different modulations like um, I know P25 uses a different modulation when it uses simulcast um, but that's a bit too complicated to go into for this video um, generally the rule to understanding standards is to understand that if they're not the same standard they won't work together but I hope this video has filled you in a bit on all the little details about digital voice standards.